Hello everyone and welcome back to my European Space Agency RP-1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I hope to get a rendezvous between the lander around Mars with the tug around Mars so that the tug can refuel the lander and maybe the lander can try a landing on the surface. Uh, but before we get to that we don't have anything being built right now and also our construction is finished of uh, pad B at ELA-6 and so I wanted to get something built and I'm still contemplating the four booster version of our big rocket here. And I don't want to make a whole new launch complex. I don't want an ELA-7 because the upkeep cost is pretty severe. And really we should be able to build the two booster version and the four booster version on the same pad and launch it off of the same pad, I think. And so uh, given that I'd like to modify this pad, um, the thing is that if I try to set it to this, boost, this uh, configuration, uh, so just barely this configuration, 1777, uh, well that's above the uh, tonnage of the two burst booster version. So it's, it's weird that it's this tight, uh, to be honest. Uh, yeah, because, you know, you would hope that the same pad could accommodate a two booster version and a four booster version of the same rocket, but the two booster version is less than 1300 tons, and then the four booster version is more than 1700 and so it's a little bit tough with the way they've done the minimum tonnage and maximum tonnage here. Uh, we could underfuel these or just make the two booster version bigger. Uh, I think it'd be better to go with an 1800 maximum tonnage and try and get some extra mass onto the onto the two booster version or we could make this lighter of course, it'd be carrying a bigger payload, normally speaking, so that's another rub. I think we'll just go with 1750 and try and split the difference. So we'll make this 4-booster version lighter, which is not optimal, and also make the other one heavier, which is not optimal. Uh, but anyway, the modified cost would be 145000 and we're already pay paying the yearly upkeep, basically. So... Yeah, I think we'll just take this and we really don't need 27 meters. It's, uh, we'll say 25 meters, 25 meters, and we'll keep it to 98 on the height limit. And yeah, maybe that would be the best move, but I, I may regret this. But anyway, let's modify. Okay, and of course, oh right, we have to modify those. Two sayings that will still support them too. Okay, so they won't actually let me modify the pad because of the other vessels there. So let's take a look at those. This does bring to mind another issue I have uh, come across. One of the reasons I started my RP-1 career was because I wanted to decide whether I had an RP-2000 career mode. This is something I created based on the old RP-0 career mode for realism overhaul and RP2000 it was just meant to be very simple and it starts in year 2000 and you play a company not a, not a country and you work your way through the tech tree and it'd be community tech tree instead of the custom tech tree for RP1 and so it would integrate the futuristic technologies from near future and KSB interstellar naturally and it was meant to be sort of simple like that. Very close to stockish and not as complicated as all this. So I had RP2000 made and I did a series with that briefly. And I want that was in 1.8.1 and I wanted to adapt it to 1.12. And that's one of the reasons that I started this RP1 career was I had to decide, well, should it adopt the RP1 stuff and should I just make a futuristic RP-1, right? Start in the year 2000, use the tech tree in some way, or should I still stick to the RP-0 method? Ultimately, I think uh, this is very, very concentrated on the 50s and 60s, and I don't think I can uh, modify the tech tree in RP-1 to start in the year 2000. I just don't think that that's viable. So I tried to start an RP-2000 career in 1.12. Then I discovered that uh, Realism Overhaul prevents you from creating a career unless you have RP1. So, and this has only been implemented in the last four months. So only the more recent versions of Realism Overhaul. 
Uh, so that was disappointing. But th there's a lot of this. Uh, the reason that I came to mind was because I was just prevented from making the pad because we've got these. And yeah, th this I can appreciate. That I really don't. It'd be fine if they could just warn us, hey, maybe you should have RP1 uh, if you want to play career mode, but let us create the career so that I can use RP2000 instead of actually preventing us from creating the career. And I checked, it's part of the Realism Overhaul plugin. There's no toggle uh, out, unless I recompile the plugin. There's no configuration file outside that lets me disable this. So I wish there were, but I checked, I checked the code of Realism Overhaul. And yeah. So that makes me sad. I want to use RP2000 and start an RP2000 crew of 1.12. Uh, ultimately, I think I'll just use an older version of Realism Overhaul that's still 1.12 compatible to do that. And so you'll be seeing that soon as well, potentially. Uh, but yeah, maybe give people a little bit of a choice every now and again. So I'm going to try and modify these so that they are above 1,312 tons. And let's see if I can do that. Oh, there's this configuration, right. Well, uh, that's fine too. <laughs> I forgot we did these on this pad, but okay. I, th I think we can manage. But if I save this, it'll say it won't fit on the pad, right? I don't know if we want the Lunar Lander anymore, but shucks. Maybe we should just scrap this one. Well, we do have to think about the controller, too. Right. It's a 1,300-ton controller. Maybe I should just make the bottom limit 1,300. Well, we probably just want a bigger controller. Let's, let's go with the best we can. It'll probably still be a net benefit over the previous controller anyway. Uh... Editor checks, listed below, yeah, okay, so we can't save it, so I'm a con in a bind. We can't save it so that it can fit the new pad, and I, so I guess I'm going to have to modify the pad with 1300 being the bottom, it's complicated. Uh, so, alright, so I'm just gonna get just under the limit. And then try to redo the pad so that it has 1299 minimum. Okay, so this is the Mars Lander N1 modified, though our thrust to weight ratio is getting a bit low there. And of course, we have to rethink this a little bit because I don't think it can error capture like this. The docking port controller and the crew cabin or lander can are behind the heat shield, they shouldn't be uh, getting heat. And so the heat conductivity, we need to find some part that's gonna let it not conduct the heat to them. And I'll experiment in uh, sandbox mode to figure out what part that might be. So uh, I'm not going to try and cheat things here, nor am I gonna use simulation mode because this is sort of a blatant, I mean, it seemed like a blatantly wrong thing, uh, unless somebody can give me some justification for it. Uh, and also, Mars' atmosphere is sort of thin, and we were going like 5,000 meters per second, so... And it's behind a heat shield, so it's not like it's some... It's not even LEO entry speeds here, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna do some testing in Sandbox to figure out what we can do for the landers so that the heat isn't conducted to them, but for now I'm just getting it to 1299 so that we can potentially uh, move along with the pad upgrade or the launch complex upgrade. Of course, we have two pads here now. Okay, so now those are being modified. Let me just get them all modified, finished off there. Okay, modify. And please modify it now. Y yeah, we'll fix this one. I don't know if that'll give us enough room for bigger payloads, but it's a start. So this will be the 4 booster version. I'll just call it Series 4. Okay, since we're modifying the pad, we can't build a new rocket at it until it is done. So let's focus on the lander now. 
and it's rendezvous with the tug. So the lander is in that orbit and the tug is up here. Um, I'm just saying that as a target, but I think we'll have the tug do the work. Uh, it's carrying less dry mass after all. The lander isn't too bad on fuel. It's got 3,367, but you know, the extra thousand or so that we need is half of it. So we're talking about the tug had better be able to deliver maybe four kiloliters of MMH, four kiloliters of Mon3 and the equivalent helium. Okay, so we have a complicated set of burns here. Well, a precise set of burns, let's put it that way. In three days, we have this 147.9 meter per second burn to correct the inclination with the target. Uh, normally, I would like to meet up with it at an ascending or descending node, but first of all, it was right down there anyway, so we're at high velocity and that's, that's not great. And also, we have a radial iffiness to us compared to the target, so I'd rather just focus on uh, burning off the radial part when we reach it rather than trying to deal with the inclination at the same time. It didn't seem like those points were going to end up in the same place. Uh, we would have to actually increase the inclination difference in order to get it to the same place. So we're taking care of that first and then coming around after a few orbits, we actually do a burn down there uh, that will sort of make this encounter possible. It's a very small burn down there. Uh, let me see if we can find it. 22 meters per second in 20 days. And then we get this meetup with 151 meters per second of relative speed and a nice separation. So that is what we're going to do. And let's see if we can accomplish it. As you can see, uh, we don't have a whole lot of spare delta V in here. If we want to transfer 4,000 liters of MMH and 4,000 liters of Mon3, so I think this set of burns will preserve that. And this is not so much a tug as a refueler now. But that's maybe okay. The, other, the problem is that we don't want the lander to be in a high orbit though. So that's another thing. Could we like air brake the lander? We're probably, I'll, I'll tell you frankly, going to do some tests and save and reload it. I think that would be the best way to go. Um, and, you know, hopefully we won't consider that too cheaty since the game sort of messed with us in the first place. Okay, ignition. Okay, well, inclination is close to being corrected, and we do want to touch up this maneuver, though, since it ended up a little bit off after all that's in quite a number of days so okay then obviously we need to make sure that this is a little bit tighter said it was a touchy bunch of maneuvers okay that's close enough to what we had planned and let us continue so we're going to have to orbit a few times before doing that well, it says it's 35.1 meter per second burn now Okay, more than I was expecting. I'll judge by the closest approach distance up there, as usual, for this part. Uh, that changed on me again, so, okay, it's not that bad. Nope, oh, except that isn't showing the same thing as we had planned. It's 550 kilometers. Um, uh, we were supposed to get less... Uh-oh. Things have changed. Okay, so here's an additional little correction of 3.7 meters per second to get that higher up encounter. That will hopefully save us some in the end. Uh, let us turn to that. Okay, that's close enough. With that, let's go up there and do the rendezvous. However, it has not escaped my attention that we might not have communication. Looking at the communication line back and where that is, Mars might block that? We'll see. Oh no, it's actually off to the side here. Okay, it's fine. Okay, there it is. Okay, we are drifting to within 100 meters. Very, very, very slowly. I forget if this one's controller is powerful enough to deal with the combined mass. Probably not. 
In which case, we're just gonna have to dump fuel in that and then see what happens. But being in orbit, we do have the luxury of air braking very, very, very softly. Okay, we have docked. Um, yeah, it says insufficient avionics, but it's actually only 0 0.141 tons too much. So maybe we could do something. Anyway, let's top it off here. Oh, uh, can we not actually transfer fuel? Enable crossfeed here. Oh, even this tank lost some. Well, that's probably because of the RCS. So let's just say, let's control from here and shut down the lander's engines. Or does that make any sense? They're the Orion engines. I think they're more efficient. But let me lock the tank tanks on the lander to see how much we actually have. Lock that as well. 125. That's not a whole lot. Once the tug is done, basically it becomes a relay satellite and nothing else. Still, it could expedite things a little bit if we could use that. Um, we need to dump 1.41 tons out from this side. Still a fair amount. The helium is a little bit lackluster though, so it's probably good that... Uh, I guess it's been leaking. It's probably a good idea to dump some of the animation mon 3. Probably it'd be unusable anyway. Okay, that's under 30 tons. And might have even saved us some Delta V. Let's see. Okay, I think that's enough dumping. So, 131 meters per second we have now. We could probably dump a little bit more and get a few more meters per second, but it's not going to make too much of a difference. And ignition. Oh, it seems like we had more. Okay, that delta V reading is just going to keep being wrong. Okay, uh, let's see. We'll leave it some fuel to orient itself and stuff like that. Well, it seems like a bit. Okay, well, so we won't use that, and we will undock. Well, let's unlock the fuels up here and then undock. Speeding, so we disable... Ah, okay, there we go. 5,000, that's more like it. Okay, well, I mean, you know, with 5,000, we could probably... We could probably bring the orbit down, even. Let me see how much it would take. Just not... Arrow break. Ah, uh, thousands a lot. Okay, well, we'll try to arrow break. Over on this side, we'll just call this Mars Relay. Okay, so as we approach Apoapsis here, I'm going to save and we're gonna see how well we can dip into the atmosphere. Now, I'll have to re enable loading quick saves if we want to use the save, but I'm hoping not to have to use it. So. And for starters, I'm going to try 60 kilometers from this orbit, so we're looking like this. Our apoapsis is just about Deimos' orbit, for reference. Of course, you have the number down there too, but this has a more visual reference. So, will this all burn up is the question. And that's hard to say. Now we do have air brakes, and I intend to use them. I don't know if they'll be heat tolerant either, but we'll see. So 4,600 meters per second. Or, well, surface 4,500-ish. We're not planning to come straight down this time. We're just trying to get into a lower orbit first. Oh, the pod blew up first. The pod blew up before anything else. 
Even the docking port survived longer. It's just the pod has something wrong with it, right? Right? There must be just something wrong with the pod at this point. Gotta run another test. Uh, let me just allow quick loading here. We'll check the heat tolerances in the VAB to compare them. So uh, this time I'm gonna set to 75 kilometers. I don't know how low that's gonna bring us. But again, we can do as many error breaking passes as we might like. Tentatively speaking though, I think I can't use this pod. Impossible to use it in the atmosphere or something, maybe? Maybe that's the maybe that's the point that you can't use it in the atmosphere? I'm not sure. But it's an overheating thing. I'm going with 74 kilometers this time. I mean the engines aren't super heat tolerant when they're not on either. Now we've seen some weird heat effects in this series with crew cabins before, um, especially with the space planes coming in. And of course those are the only things that do re-entry without a heat shield. So, ah, uh, look. Uh, will it accumulate too much? I think so. We didn't really slow down very much. I'm gonna load it once again and try to slow down a little bit more ahead of time. I do have to emphasize that Mars's atmosphere is rather thin. Uh, the pressure differential between the inside and outside of the cabin is large, right? 14.7 psi or however you want to measure it. Um, so it shouldn't have any problem with uh, atmosphere on the outside being added when it's uh, such a small atmosphere. So that's not an issue. And we're talking about 4,500 meters per second in a really, really, really thin atmosphere. And we're talking about 70 kilometers, right? I mean, it's not low either. And of course, there's the whole thing where it also exploded when we had a heat shield protecting it. Okay, 80 kilometers. That will hardly do anything as far as aero capturing is concerned. It's not even slowing us down, but it's overheating the cabin. Uh, but yeah, in fact, it didn't even get... I don't think it caused the antenna to explode, which is hilarious. I should update the the mods though. I didn't want to update it because it might mess up a whole bunch of stuff. After all, I did, you know, enable the Mars program, right? The crude Mars program. So I have to be careful about the things that have changed so far. But then do I want to update my mods? I mean, a realism overhaul now has this version that prevents me from using RP2000, do I want to condone that sort of thing? Okay, uh, we're getting retro burning here. Okay, I would appreciate it if I did not have to use any more than that. I want 4,800 left. Uh, mentally, that's about 400 for landing and 4,400 for getting back into orbit. No dice, I don't think. Oh, we're gonna hit periapsis soon. Let me just fizz warp through this. Uh, I don't think I can save it even with slowing down. We're going up. Is that gonna make it? No. It's not going to make it happier. Uh, yeah, the antenna is fine. <laughs> um, you know what? Given the results, maybe you guys have some suggestion. Uh, let me leave this here for a sec. And let's go to the VAB and see if I missed something about the heat tolerances or something in the description about this pod that might enlighten us. So let's see. I mean, maybe it is the atmospheric thing, though I don't, because it does say lightweight non-atmospheric landers, though I don't see how one one hundredth of Earth's atmosphere or point 
147 PSI could possibly cause a problem for it, considering the internal pressure is like, I mean, 5 PSI minimum, potentially 14.7, uh, sorry for using PSI uh, metric people, but um, yeah. I, I don't buy that it would be crushed in the atmosphere since it has to be launched. <laughs> since it has to be launched in the first place. So, yeah, even though it says non-atmospheric, non I, I feel instinctively that because it has to be launched in an atmosphere, uh, it probably can deal with one one-hundredth of an atmosphere. So, 448673. What, what's the docking port like? Because, you know, that's a reference that we... 448588. So, the Apollo docking system we have at the top of it has less heat tolerance in theory, just going by those numbers. Remember, I told you there are other numbers, but, uh, uh, you know, at first glance, it has less heat tolerance than the pod. Okay? And let's not talk about the antenna and its atmospheric tolerance, right? I mean, uh, yeah, this is the one that we have poking out. It also has less heat tolerance than the pod, and it certainly was not meant for dynamic pressure. 0.5 kPa dynamic pressure, okay? That, I, it's folded up ahead of time, so I buy that it would explode when it's extended, but it didn't. It didn't due to the atmosphere or the dynamic pressure. This one... I mean, it doesn't say anything about a dynamic pressure limit in here, unlike the antenna. The antenna does say so. Part not rated for re-entry. I mean, does it just automatically explode it if it's re-entering? But that doesn't make any sense in this situation, right? I mean, I think what they've done frankly, is that they've decided that this wouldn't be able to survive a Mars entry, even though I don't see any particular reason why it shouldn't. Well, that that's my supposition. It's just, you just can't use it, uh, even though there is no particular logic to that. You know, there's temperature, and then there's its atmospheric tolerance. Saying you just can't use it in this situation doesn't isn't realism so i'm very disappointed as you can tell and i'm just gonna leave it here for now and i guess i'll have to switch what lander can we use and we'll see what i do with that there are options <laughs> i mean if if we have to pick something that can handle entry i guess we have to use a gemini cabin right stands to reason i guess that's how, you know, that's the sort of thing that has to happen, or the Mark 1 pod or something. But that's only one person that wanted two. I mean, I've done uh, Mars landing with a Gemini cabin before. I wanted to try something a little bit different, but here we are. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.